This is the fourth in a series of conversations with Mr. Don Anderson of Roswell, New Mexico. This interview takes place in the Anderson Museum of Contemporary Art. Don talks about his works and one of the great loves of his life as a patron of the Artist in Residence program. Enjoy. Don Anderson, this is the fourth interview we've done with you, and it's uh, about the 10th of March, the year 2009, we're sitting in what's the middle of what's really your museum, and behind you over your right shoulder, see some of your big paintings, and over the left, some art that is not yours. What we'd like to talk about is, well, when you made that transition from being an artist to being uh, the patron um, of the arts. Um, take us back. You, you're in Roswell, and then how did this idea come to uh, sponsor artists? Well, uh, I first, uh, after uh, getting out of the Navy in 1946, uh, got interested in starting up the uh, Roswell Museum, and Paul Horgan was uh, the lead person in that. And um, uh, since that connection, I'm still on the board of the Roswell Museum uh, uh, 60 years later, so, uh, and a lot has happened since then. But uh, as a result of uh, being uh, connected with the museum, it stimulated my interest in the arts, and not that it, I already had great interest, but the desire to expand the art scene in Roswell. And it took a number of years to actually accomplish that because the uh, program that uh, exists today really got started in uh, 1963 when uh, Herb Goldman, a, a friend who was teaching at University of New Mexico uh, came to Roswell and did a very large sculpture commission for me. And uh, that was almost a year's work. And it, it is a huge uh, piece of sculpture. It's probably 150 feet long and 75 feet wide and 50 feet high. And it stands out at our house. but. Uh, after Herb was here in 63, uh, nothing really uh, gelled for me on how to uh, pursue it more until Howard Cook came along. And uh, Howard was uh, a long time, very well known Taos painter. And, uh, had uh, spent his uh, winters in Mexico, but um, was getting to a point where he didn't want to drive that far. And uh, uh, we heard about it and uh, found a place out near our house where Howard could spend his winters. And um, he eventually moved to Roswell, and we shared my studio together for nine years. But so Howard was the first in the program. And so what, was it a program then? It's, it sounds like you had a, uh, a, a couple of people who came and did sculpture and did art with you, and then suddenly you're moving toward an, what you call the artist in residence program and eventually providing housing and material and all of that. So, so you've got two people uh, here, and did you just wake up one day and say, gee, I could do this? or? Uh, how, how did it happen? No, I had a, a little farm property northwest of town with one house on it, and that became the uh, west campus of the residency program and, uh, until this east one was built two years ago. But uh, we found uh, someone to move in there, and. Uh, uh, also, uh, there were, uh, I think it started with three artists, uh, all were presently in New Mexico and uh, expressed an interest in wanting to come to the company, be here. So that was the original core group. 
and um, what really uh, blossomed was the uh, uh, when uh, Bill Majet came and uh, originally came to uh, do a mural inside this uh, a big piece of sculpture that uh, uh, Herb Goldman did at our property. And uh, Bill was then uh, the uh, head of the art department at Reed College and uh, on and off for most of a year painted in the the hinge and did this mural around uh, uh, one of the big rooms in there. So uh, that's known formally or informally as the hinge, is that, yes. is that right? And uh, you told me at one time that perhaps this was inspired. You took your family to uh, Afghanistan in the early 60s. Right. And are there some echoes um, in that well, sculpture? They, uh, when we, I talked to her about I said that we, I'd experienced these wonderful ruins in uh, Afghanistan that were uh, originally just uh, huge adobe structures, but over the centuries had disintegrated down to where they rose out of a, a mountain or a, a very steep uh, slope that was just the uh, deteriorated adobe from the original buildings. And the, if he could make an inspiration from th that idea, and that's how Herb started out. Did he come pretty close? Uh, no, but uh, what he uh, did was very good. Yeah, he went far beyond that, right. <laughs> It, it sounds that you are, uh, it's people-based. When I ask you about a program, you respond, well, it was this person and that person. Right. Uh, it, it, is that how it grew? So, so you've got a core of three or four, and then what, what happened? Uh, well, when Bill Majette, he stayed on two years. In the second year, as a, a resident in the program, and his experience was just what we needed at the time is he knew how to do things, how to find artists, and uh, it was really the uh, person who I'd give more credit for uh, the program as it stands today as to any other person. It began to grow, and then you underwrote the uh, people, the artists coming here. Yes. And uh, eventually you got a, a board to uh, a screen or choose whatever word you want to use. Right. Um, but going back to that, those earlier times, how involved were you in selecting, choosing artist A or B? Uh, or? Very involved. And uh, the involvement then was uh, we only had uh, starting out from one house of uh, having for each new artist to move in another house. And the houses uh, came from anywhere we could uh, find them. And one the farthest away came from Midland, Texas. Uh, drove over here at 50 miles an hour, I guess. And, uh, but, uh, uh, most of them came from uh, the Air Force Base. Uh, they were uh, a lot of uh, sort of temporary housing and at what's now the uh, Roswell Industrial Air Center. But and those were very sound, well-built structures. And were, so eventually, how many on that, what you now call the West Compound, how many houses did, did you get there? Uh, there's six there. Uh, yeah. right. And so six houses, uh, people can come with families and stay for, uh, how, how long's the, the grant? The grant's for eight, one year. We, do, uh, we don't like to take anyone less than a year because I figure that uh, really to get established here, get started to work and everything takes a period of time. And uh, once they're established, they have a long run of being uh, productive and they're on their own. There are no 
other requirements other than you don't have to produce a work of no, art. No, or, no, you don't. How's uh, how did Roswell take to this invasion of artists who live out there and I do art? I don't think Roswell even knew that it was happening. Uh, you know, the uh, West Compound was far enough out on. Uh, uh, northwest of town, when not much traffic went by there, and just to see another house spring up was nothing new in a growing community. So uh, I think for years no one ever re realized that uh, this program was here. In fact, probably not until uh, this museum was built, and uh, the museum's sole purpose is to show the work of artists that have been in the program. So uh, that's uh, really our, this is our public uh, exposure to, and very successful, right? And this museum we're in, you began building it when? Well, the uh, room we're in now was built in 1950 as a truck terminal. And, uh, it had there's 5,000 square feet in this building, and uh, various uh, additions have now brought that up to 20,000 square feet. So it's a much bigger than, than I ever pictured uh, doing. But uh, step by step, it's just been obvious we needed this, and a wonderful experience for me. This. Um the newest gallery uh, you put in, and we'll do some walking through there. Well, when did that open? Two years ago, I think, yeah. Oh, you think you're at the end of uh, adding on, or do you envision? I think it? we are, because uh, we are uh, have about run out of room to uh, build on, so uh, this is probably the... Uh, ultimate size of the museum. Now, these uh, it's filled with um, two categories of things. One is your paintings and some of the larger ones. Right. And also then, uh, th these are all works from artists in residence? Yes, right? yes, right. My, my work is the only exception, and I just indulge myself to, because uh, I, I've been an artist in residence longer than any of them, and I feel that I, I uh, as running the show, could have a pick out and have an art house gallery of my own. Right. Sounds like fun. Yeah, right. <laughs> mm, yeah. The, uh, it's an eclectic uh, assemblage. It's paintings and sculptures of, of all kinds. Though, how did you how did you decide on this kind of wide-ranging art scope? Well, it's just what we've uh, had available for people on the, on the program. Each uh, year we have a jury screening that uh, picks uh, artists for the next year, and that's... Uh, pick is purely on the merit of their work, and uh, so the work can be extremely varied, and if the quality is uh, competitive with the best, uh, that's what we get an artist who's uh, doing things that have some have never done before, so that makes the extreme uh, uh, richness of this uh, um, ex can, can you illustrate that calling to mind a couple of three, four works in this museum that you go, oh yeah? Uh, well, some of the bigger works stand out, you know, like the, uh, um, the one in the McIntyre Gallery is the biggest painting we have, and I think it is uh, like 14 by 18 feet and a picture of a truck being run, run into a flood. And uh, it's inspired by the 
famous uh, painting in the Louvre of uh, the ship that, uh, in a storm, the uh, captain and the crew abandoned and left the passengers to uh, work for themselves. And they, after the ship sank, and they made a raft and survived uh, the storm and eventually were saved. And uh, it caused the downfall of the uh, French government. It was such an outrage of what had happened. But uh, that painting in the Louvre is bigger than the one we have even here. And another one that uh, is the uh, woodwork piece uh, in uh, the North Gallery that uh, is uh, quite unusual just by its shape and everything. But um, and maybe the the uh, sharks that hang from the ceiling in the center gallery, uh, and those sharks are formed out of golf bags with heads put on them and fins. So uh, there's quite a uh, remarkable uh, uh, bit of uh, things to see. And it's almost like if anyone comes in here, uh, they'll find something that uh, touches and that they relate to and like. So. Do you buy works that you don't understand or don't like? Uh, or disturb you? I mean, uh, no, it's, it's some I'm not uh, it, it, too uh, pleased with, but uh, it's just purely on the merit of the work that, you know, uh, your, sir, your own tastes are not 100%. and. Uh, you can uh, realize that something has real value, but uh, you personally don't uh, uh, relate to it or see it very well. Well, would it be fair to say that um, many people who come in here would find the assemblage or collection avant-garde? It's not, uh, they're not all pretty paintings. Uh, how do people respond to it? To, these, to this collection? Well, uh, they resp respond to parts they like and parts they don't like. And uh, I think we get, on the whole, favorable comments. But I'm sure there are people who don't like things. And uh, they don't tell us very often, but we do hear. Yeah, but, well, I, it, it's not exactly a safe collection, is it? No, no. What's the best part of um, of this collecting for you? Well, it, uh, since uh, we've had the museum, this is it's a visual history of the program, and uh, Enriching that as time goes by is a very rewarding experience and uh, something uh, that I look forward to and that uh, every artist who comes, uh, I have real interest in uh, the work they're doing and, uh, and uh, getting a piece of, uh, from, uh, of them for this collection. Yeah. These are really personal relationships you develop with the with the artists. It, right. it, it it's not an institution. It, it's no, something you're invested no, no, in. No, no, we, Sally and I, uh, get to know each artist uh, fairly well over a year's time and know th their work, see, visit their studios, and uh, it's a very rewarding experience. See, not too long ago, there was a large homecoming of um, artists invited back to celebrate um, the anniversary and to meet with you and to honor you. Uh, remind us about that. 
Uh, that was our 40th anniversary in 2007. And uh, I think we had 80 artists come back, uh, farthest one probably from Munich, Germany, but uh, uh, they came from widely in long places to come. And uh, there was a wonderful event, and the uh, people who uh, had been in the program came but didn't know any uh, one who had been in their, their time had no problem relating to all the rest of them. And as a result of that reunion, there were new friendships established that uh, are ongoing. An alumni association was born. Is that's what that's what it sounds like to me? Yeah, right. What else would you like to say about this museum? Um, remind us, how many galleries are there? There are. Uh, I think there are the seven major galleries, and then there's uh, smaller ones. So uh, the uh, Largest one is uh, measures 60 by 60 feet, and all of the galleries have 16 foot ceilings. Mm -hmm. Don, thank you. We're going to go see some of your museum. All right, good. Thank you, Hugh. Mm -hmm.